I don't know if you can see this or not, but I have a box here that shows my picture, which I don't want to see, and your name. It's Dawson87. No, Dawson E87, I guess. I guess that's your phone or something. Okay, and we'll go from current slide. I think we're ready to go then. If it'll ever go to the current slide. But it's not going to current slide. There we go. All right. And I've got the... There we go. I need to get my pen. My yesterday this happened and today it's happening. My pen slows down like crazy. I think part of it is I've got so much loaded on the computer. I've got Screencast-O-Matic, PowerPoint, Zoom, and I have to have my uh, Blackboard open because that's where I send the uh, announcements from. So it just is, I think, slows down the system too much. And then the pen doesn't want to cooperate. <clears throat> okay. Any questions from what we did just last time? Okay. Well, my memory is we're in Chapter 3, Determinants, 3.2, Determinants and Elementary Operations. And we're on page 120. Um, and what we had just done... Oh, we had done the, before you get to example three, there were a couple of uh, not quite examples, but like examples at the top of the page. And we had done the first one, going to do the second one. Is that where you had us? Okay. So here we have a determinant of a matrix. My pen's not writing. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Two. I have to write slowly or else it won't write at all. 4, negative 2, and sometimes it doesn't write even then. Negative 2, 3, 1, 4. Okay, did we just get someone come in? I heard a ding, but I don't know what it was. Then a negative 5, a 0, and a negative 3. Okay. Now, uh, if, if you'll think back of the last things we were doing, we're talking about row equivalent and column equivalent matrices. And remember, if you exchange a row or a column now, you have to negate the, the determinant. If you add or subtract, or add a multiple of one row to another row, you don't change the determinant at all. But if you add or subtract, I'm sorry, if you multiply or divide, a row or a column by a uh, constant, non-zero constant, of course, then you uh, change it by that same factor. Now, here is kind of the good news on that. Uh, it says my internet connection is unstable. Did you see that on your screen? Okay. I don't know. It said that earlier. I don't. Oh, I think I may know why my power cord is unstable and that may be part of the problem here i'm not indicating i have any that my power cord is my blue light my second blue light on my computer is not bright at all this may make it very hard to write Sometimes it does this and then runs the battery down. Okay, I'm going to um, 
plug and then plug back in and see if that works. Nothing worked there. I wonder if the light just went out because usually I get at least a flicker when I fiddle around with this. Ah, I'm getting a little bit of a flicker there. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. The good news of this is if you have a row of a, or a column with a common factor like we have here. Do you see it? A row or a column with a column common factor. Uh, column, one. column one. A common factor being two. two. You can, in a sense, look like you factor out the two. If I could get it to write the two. And then write the, ter the determinant of what's left. Okay, my pen is being really awkward here. So what's left? One. Okay, if we're going down the column, because that's what we're factoring it out of, that would be... I'm sorry? Two, negative one, perfect. And then the rest stays the same. You're not factoring out of the whole matrix. This is just a determinant. This is not the same as a common factor in the, the whole matrix. This is just the determinant part. So then you do a three, one, four, negative five, zero, my pen is so slow. Zero. Zero. Negative three. I, I cannot <clears throat> explain away why it does this. I have some theories, but I don't know if they're at all true. And that's what they have there in the text. That negative 3 is pretty spotty, but it's there. Okay. All right. In evaluating a uh, determinant, it is occasionally convenient to use elementary column operations rather than row operations, and that's what we're going to do in example 3. So I think I'm going to go on and delete this one. Is that okay? And now my cursor is not being very responsive. Okay, here we go. Example 3. And by the way, you can go to linear, uh, larsenlinearalgebra.com for an interactive version of this example. Okay? Or this type of an example. Here is matrix A, not determinant A. You have to sort of distinguish between a matrix and a determinant here. Negative 1. I swear pen just chooses the right sometime and doesn't choose the other time. Three, I'm going down rows, I mean columns here. Five. Two. Six, that's a negative six. Negative ten. I don't know why it's so slow. Two, four, negative three. Okay. There's a matrix. Okay, finally. I hope I got all the minus signs. I wrote them, but they <coughs> may not have shown up. All right. Now, it says find the determinant of that matrix. Now we know how to do a three by three. We can expand, repeat the first two columns and, and go with it that way. 
but it's still going to be some big numbers. Okay? If you can see a way to do anything else that would be beneficial, do it. Do you notice anything about this particular matrix? It seems suspicious or like an easy thing to do or something like that. And I admit, I always look at rows first because I'm used to doing that. However, pay attention to your columns as well. What do you notice? Okay, not only does it have a common factor, column two, but I noticed that when I was writing it, but look more carefully, compare it to column one. Negative 2 times column 1 is column 2. Now, whenever you have that, you have a dependent system, right? A dependent system, the determinant is going to be what? Zero. Now, you probably don't believe me, but do this. Let's do the, remember, elementary row or column operation, if you multiply add a multiple of one row to another row so let's or, or column so let's do um, two times column one add it to column two now okay i think i've got the things in there this is so bizarre how it just throws in lines wherever it wants to. Okay. Now, I'm going to do this as a matrix too, so I'm doing a couple things at once. Okay. So at least keep the first column, negative 1, because you can't really do that to a matrix. So I better go back and take out the matrix symbol, because that's, that's not a legal move to do to a matrix. You can do it to a... Determinant, but you can't do it to a matrix. I can't get my eraser to work either. There it goes. Sort of. Okay. So let's make this. Boy, nothing's working fast. Certainly me. Okay. That's equal to this determinant. One, a negative one. Three. Even writing slowly, it's not doing. Okay. And two times column one added to column two, what do you get? Zero. 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 Okay, if that second zero would ever write. Zero. Third zero now won't write. Okay, got them all three. And it doesn't matter what that third row is. A column. Two. Ah. Two. Four. Negative three. It just does whatever it wants to. Okay. Well, this time my power is on fine, but it still says my internet is unstable. Now, I am upstairs and my router is downstairs, but I'm right kind of above it. It has been good so far, but today is acting strange. All right. Now, how would you take the determinant of that one? Choose any row or any column and go down it. This will be... 0 times that determinant, that's going to be 0, plus 0 times that determinant, that's going to be 0, and 0 times that one, 0, 0. 
anytime you have a row or a column that is a multiple of each other, no matter how big or small the matrix is, that's going to have a zero determinant. Guarantee. Okay. And they carry it out to uh, obnoxious order there, but it's there. So, what we just, oh, and by the way, there is a linear algebra applied. Are you in the Sudoku? I'm sorry? Not really. Not really, okay. Uh, I haven't done them much lately, but there was a while back there that I was doing them any chance I could get. The trouble is my wife would always get the paper before I would, so she always had them done. But when we got a book or two of them, and then I got them on my cell phone, and that was a lot of time, but I, I quit doing that pretty much. But it, it was eating too much time. But anyway, the Sudoku puzzle, uh, the object is to fill out a partially completed 9x9 nine nine grid of boxes with numbers from 1 to 9, so that each column each row and each 3x3 three three subgrid contains each number once, 1 through 9 once. Uh, for a completed sub Sudoku grid to be valid, no two rows or columns will have the numbers in the same order. Uh, if that should happen, then the terminal of the 9x9 nine nine matrix would be 0, and that would be it wouldn't be a valid matrix anymore. So even a game like that uses linear algebra. Okay. If you want to pursue that, you might investigate that for a paper topic, but that's up to you. Hint. Hint. Never mind. Okay. Moving on to page 121. What we were just doing, matrices and zero determinants. Example 3 showed that when two columns of matrix are scalar multiples of each other, the determinant of the matrix is 0. That is one of three conditions that yield a determinant of 0. I think I'll clear the screen just so I won't have as much trouble writing. Because it seems like the more I put on the screen, the slower it gets. So, here's theorem 3.4. If A is a square matrix, which is almost redundant in this chapter, because if we're doing determinant, the matrix has better be square, and I cannot get it to write an S. It almost got one. I'm going to leave it there. S is a square matrix. Okay. And if any one of these conditions is true, then the determinant of A, I'm sorry, I messed that up, is equal to, equal to zero. Okay, this is ugly, I know. One. Pretty obviously, if you have an entire row or column of zeros, the whole determinant is zero. Any row that won't write, row or column, I can't get it to write. Goodness gracious. Won't write uh, any row or column, all zeros. Again, it's not writing. Okay, all zeros. Then the determinant's got to be a zero. That's a kind of a duh, no brainer one. If any row or column is all zeros, the determinant is zero. Okay. Two rows or columns equal. I finish writing and then it shows up. I 
can't get the Q to show up. There it is, somewhere in there. Then that determinant is zero. And the third one, the one we just saw, an example, one row or column is a multiple of another row or column. Can't get it to write. <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. Uh, I wrote faster than this when I was in first grade. I'm just going to stop with another. I'm not going to write row or column again. But I can't even write another without it being... Okay. So I'll stop it there. There's an R somewhere there. Okay, there we go. That's ugly. Sorry about that. One row or column is a multiple of another row or column. Okay. Now, have you got your book in front of you? Yeah. You do. So you can see those three examples. I don't know if uh, Josh has a book or not. I'm sorry if you don't, Josh, but you know, <laughs> this is not writing well at all. Um, the first example there in the middle of page 121, it's not an example, but just an illustration. First row is all zeros. That's a three by three matrix. Hang it up. The determinant is zero. No way around it. Um, the second matrix listed there is a one, negative two, four as the top row and a one, negative two, four in the bottom row doesn't matter what the middle row is, those two rows being the same, that determinant is zero. And then in the third example, the first column is a 1, 2, negative 2. doesn't matter what the second column is, but the third column is a negative 3, negative 6, 6. Um, if you look carefully, the third column is exactly a multiple, negative 3 times the first column. Therefore, the determinant will be zero. Okay. So let's do example four. I say, I almost regret saying it, okay? Let's try it. Find the determinant of this matrix here. This is matrix A. All right, that's a pretty ugly A even uglier equal signs, okay? One, two, zero is the first column. Okay. Four, negative one, 18 is the second column. This is worst writing ever. And then 104 is the third column. Okay. If I move the pen too fast, it doesn't write. Okay. Now. First thing to do, of course, none of those rows or columns are zeros. 
none of the rows or columns are the same, and none of the rows or columns are multiples of each other. Now, they listed those three as things that would make a matrix, the determinant of a matrix be zero, but those aren't the only ones. This could have a zero determinant without any of those being true. But we can do our row reduction or column reduction and see if we can get anywhere. And especially if you use multiplying one row or adding a multiple of one row to another row. If you do that one, it doesn't change your determinant. If you exchange two rows, you change your determinant. If you add or multiply or divide by a non-zero constant, you change the determinant. But as long as you do that other one, adding a multiple of one row to another. So let's see if we can do row reduction here, or column reduction. Do you have a preference on which we do? Row or column reduction? Let's do, I like row two, row also, okay. So what would be your first reduction? Okay, that wrote better that time. It, of course, it erased my line over here. I don't know why. So anyway, this row reduced matrix A will be first row we didn't mess with. So it's one, four, one. What's your new row two? Zero. Zero. Negative nine. Negative nine. Negative two. Okay. Write down the third row. Do you notice anything? Besides my eight looks terrible. Okay. Anything else? Exactly. So what can what can you say about the determinant? Zero. Determinant of A is equal to zero. You don't have to do anything more. You don't have to make a row of zeros. You don't have to make a column of zeros. You don't have to actually do a determinant. Once you see that, the determinant is zero. You got it. Okay? Now, Um, I can't believe, in fact, I can't even tell what they said. Wow, I've never seen them do this before. They did that row reduction by doing a negative 2 times the first one added to the second one. I've never seen them write it out the way they did in the book there on, on the bottom of 121. Did the same thing we did, but they didn't write it out on the side like they usually do. They did it inside, but they still come up with the same thing we did, okay? And as soon as you see that, the determinant zero. They didn't take it any further. What they did in the middle step, though, was really bizarre. Okay. And in that example, example four, you could have obtained a matrix with a row of all zeros by performing necessary additional row operations. But why? As soon as you see it's a multiple of the other, you know it's going to be zero. Okay? So it says now you have studied two methods for evaluating determinants. Of these, the method using elementary row operations for some reason, my internet connection is unstable. Do I break up or anything when it says that? Uh, a little bit, but not that much. Okay. I guess we're having trouble. Uh, we have noticed here before, Sunday afternoons, it seems our, our internet goes really wacko, and we just thought there are too many people on the system. But I would think Thursday <laughs> midday would not be that situation. So it may be something in the house. I don't know. Okay. Sorry. Um, but it says of these using elementary row operations, 
and I would say or column operations, uh, to reduce a matrix to a triangular form is usually faster than the cofactor expansion. Yes, yes, yes. So if you're going to a triangular form, I would say elementary row operations. If the matrix is large, then the number of arithmetic operations needed for cofactor expansion can become incredibly large. And for that reason, most computer and calculator algorithms use the method involving row operations. They're usually much more efficient. Go with them. The table below indicates this. Start with that 3x3 three three like we just did. Now, we didn't have to go far, but uh, the cofactor expansion, if uh, a degree order in 3x3 three three matrix, you had 5 additions, 9 multiplication, uh, that was a total of 14 operations. If you had done the row reductions first and then, you would have had 8 additions and 10 multiplications. So actually, 3 by 3s cofactor expansion, and actually I would say our method of expanding the, uh, the matrix, that's the way to go. On a 3 by 3 that's the way to go. 5 by 5 though, look at what happens. Cofactor expansion, 119 additions, 205 multiplications, that's a total of 324 operations, row reduction 40 and 44, that's 84. That's significant, okay? 10 by 10, and I don't even want to go there, but that would be 3,620,000, well, you see it, in excess of, in fact, awfully close to 10 million operations for cofactor expansion and still a lot but it's only 669 operations for row reduction first by all means do row reduction i would say anything larger than a three by three in fact the maximum number of additions alone in the cofactor expansion of an n by n matrix is n factorial minus one so the factorial 30 factorial it's approximately equal to 2.65 times 10 to the 32nd. So even a relatively small oh, 30 by 30 matrix could require an extremely large number of operations and your computer times. If your computer could do 1 trillion operations a second, it could still take more than 22 trillion years to compute the determinant of a 30 by 30 matrix by cofactor expansion. Don't go that route. When evaluating a determinant by hand, you sometimes save steps by using elementary row or column operations to create a row or column having zeros in all but one position. Then your cofactor expansion is way shorter. Okay? So let's do one of those. Example 5. Okay, find the determinant of this matrix A. Now all of a sudden things are doing much better. Minus 3, 5, 2, 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 3, 0, 6. Look at that, everything's just writing perfectly now. I wonder if the problem has been our wireless system. Uh, I don't know. Internet connection. Why it shows up in the pen, I'm not sure, but that's what it seems to be doing. So, uh, what's problematic about this matrix. You see anything you particularly like or don't like about it? You still there? Yeah. Okay. Now we we're looking to find the determinant. We don't care about anything else about the matrix. We're not going to do 
other things with it. We just want to find the determinant. Anything that's problematic about it to you. To me, I like having a 1 in the upper left. We don't, okay? We don't even have a, a 1 in the first column anywhere, okay? So my first inclination would be do some column adjustments. And that 1, negative 1 you got there, build from it. Now that's what I said. But then I paused and took another look. Okay. All we need is a row or a column with a lot of zeros in it. <coughs> We've only got one zero in this whole matrix. There it is. But look at here. In that third row where that zero is located, the third entry is uh, minus two times the first entry. Right? So one simple column adjustment there is going to give us uh, a row with two zeros in it. So what I'm going to do is change from a matrix here to the determinant. The determinant of A is the determinant of negative 3, 5, 2, 2, negative 4, negative one. Oh, wait, just a second. I'm surprised I wasn't in trouble. I'm so loud. My wife's working at home too. She's down in the office, which is almost as far away as you can get on the first floor. I'm up here, but my voice still carries like a ton of bricks. So I had the door open. I meant to close it. So, We'll leave the negative, well, we're going to write it down, negative 3, 0, 6. This is the thing to pay attention to. One simple column operation, one of those that is nice, adding a multiple of one to another, is going to produce a 0 here. So basically what we do, what would be the operation? Okay, not negative, two. Two times column one added to column three becomes a new column three. Won't that work? Because it's already the opposite sign, so you just double it and add it. Won't that work? Okay. So what's the new, and this is one of those operations that doesn't change the determinant. So the determinant of A is now still the determinant of this one. Uh, we didn't change column one, 1 at all, so it's still negative 3 to negative 3. Yeah, you know, we started up, and we didn't do anything to column 2, so it's 5 minus 4, 0. Even though I've done it many times, it's still so weird to do with columns. What's your new column 3? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, negative four. What'd you say? Three. Three. Got it. Zero. Zero. Okay. Now, that's a pretty easy one to do because it's down to basically a two by two. So what you do, you're using this negative three here. What is the sign of that position? Now my internet connection is unstable again. I don't know why. Okay, what, what is it? The sign of that position, where that negative 3 is on the bottom. That one right there. What's the sign of that position? Positive, yeah. Plus, minus, plus. Yeah, it's a plus. So we use the positive of that value, which is negative 3. You don't change the sign. You do that. And then you do times the determinant of 5, negative 4, negative 4, 3. 
Now, normally I wouldn't write that. I would just do it. But let's do it. Negative 3 times down diagonal gives you Fifteen up diagonal gives you uh, right. So fifteen minus sixteen is negative one, and this gives you three. The determinant is three. Now, doing any other method, even our expanding the. Uh, 3 by 3 by the first two columns, it's still not going to be as fast as this. So anytime you can get a row of almost all zeros, all but one being, you, you can reduce things pretty quickly. Now if this has started out a 5 by 5 and you got to something like this, then see what you can do with that 4 by 4, you know, because every time you do something you only reduce by 1, you still got a problem on your hands, but see if you can do anything else. But if you get down to a two by two, just do it. And sure enough, they got a three as well. All right. Any questions on that one? None? Okay, let's move on to example six. Okay. Whoa. I think they heard me. I should say things more quietly. Here is a, believe it or not, a 5 by 5. 2, 0, 1, 3, negative 2. Notice how much better the pen's writing. I don't know. Negative 2, 1, 3, 2, negative 1. 1, 0, negative 1, 2, 3. 3, negative 1, 2, 4, negative 3, and 1, 1, 3, 2, 0. I hope I got all the numbers right. What would be your approach to this one? What do you look at first? What do you observe first? What do you focus on first? What grabs your attention? I'm still writing down. Oh, you're still writing down. Okay, sorry. Now, I hope you're checking and making sure I wrote mine correctly too because I have a distance between my book and my writing. Especially when the writing is doing poorly, but thank goodness it's doing well now. What would you look at, focus toward? What grabs your attention on this one? Anything? Let me give you a hint. The row or the column with the most zeros. What would that be? Uh, column two. Column two. And in addition to having the most zeros, it has the smallest numbers. Okay? In fact, all those numbers are multiples of each other. So I would be really tempted. Now my internet connection is unstable. I'm waiting till it goes off. Did my voice break up more than? A little bit, yeah. A little bit, okay. So sorry about that. I don't know what to do about it. My guess is maybe Karen's on the internet too and using high usage of it and I must be dragging on it as well. So maybe it's not anything on the outside, maybe it's us. All right, now I would be really tempted to use the fourth row here 
and add the second row, make that a zero, add the fifth row, and make that a zero. And that leaves me a minus one there. That all right with you, or would you rather do it some other way? That's fine. Say again? That's fine. Okay. So, I'm going to do row four plus row two to be the new row two. Uh-oh, it's stopping again. Okay. And then I'll do row four plus row five and be the new row five. Okay. Now I'm going to leave this as a matrix for now. And then later I will... The pen's doing it again. So maybe... The, I don't know. Okay. And the next step, I'll probably go to determinants. Okay. Row 1 stays the same. 2, 0, 1, 3, 2. That 2 came out strangely. Everything is doing... <laughs> this is... I'm sorry this is taking so long to write. Okay. Okay. That was a negative 2. I still can't get it right. Okay. 2, 0, 3, negative 2. Tell me if you see me doing anything wrong with this. Now I'm going to add row 4 to row 2. And what does that give you? First entry. One, second entry, zero. It's a really ugly zero. Third entry, five. Fourth entry, I couldn't hear. Did you say something? Are you still there? Six. Six, okay. And the fifth entry, negative four. Negative four, good. Okay. Third row stays the same. One, zero, negative one, two, and three. Okay. We're using row four, so it stays the same. If I could write. If it would erase. Okay. Three. Negative 1. I can't get it to write. Okay, there it went. 2. 4. Negative 3. Now, the fifth row changes. Add the fourth row to fifth row. That's pretty easy to write on top of each other. What you got there? Row 4 plus row 5. 4. Wait. 0. 5. 6. Negative 3. Things were doing okay until that one. The numbers got sort of big. All right. So now we'll deal with determinants. The determinant of this matrix A is going to be now I'm going to use this entry here that negative one okay what's the sign of that position plus minus plus minus minus that's going to be a negative times a negative one it's just going to be one so I could leave that off altogether times the determinant of the 4 by 4 that's left. So I'm going to wipe out this row and wipe out this column. Okay? And that gives me a 2, 1, 3, negative 2. A 1, 
five, six, negative four. Okay, it's hard writing. A one, negative one, two, three. And a four, five, six, negative three. Okay. Oh no. Not only did we lose that one remaining zero that was in the matrix, we wound up with some pretty big numbers. Okay? Now, do you have a preference for what to look for next? Okay, now if you start doing that, you're going to change the sign of the matrix anytime you swap two rows. So I would say let's try to avoid those if we can help it. Now here's, and this is just my sick way of looking at things. I look to see if anything is easily multiplied by anything. I don't see much. So where I focus next is the simplest row or column we have. And frankly, that looks like row three to me. Okay? Because you see you have a one, minus one, two, and three. That's not going to be too hard to eliminate that minus one, two, and three using that first one. Using column operations. Uh, and the smaller the numbers you're multiplying, the less likely you are to get big numbers. So I like to avoid the big numbers if possible. So let's do uh, column one plus column. Ah, I can't even get my eraser to come up now. There it is. Well, I got the box, but I can't get the eraser. There it is. Okay. So used to writing row that uh even though I was saying column I was writing row. Column two is the new column two. Okay. So let's do that first. Determinant of A, I'm gonna leave off the one because it's just one. That's the determinant of. Okay, let's we're using column one, so let's just write it down. 2, 1, 1, 4. Okay? And we're changing column 2 just by adding column 1 to it. So what do you get? 3, 6, 0, 9. Hmm, that's sort of interesting. Now, the next one, I don't have much room to write below, so I'm going to write it above negative 2 times column 1, add that to column 3, okay? That'll be the new column 3. So let's do that. What do we get? Negative 1, got it. Four. 4, if I could write it. Next, next, zero. zero, I like it, okay, and next, second, okay, okay, my thing came up so I didn't hear you, what did you say, negative two, okay, that's what I think I got to, okay, um, yeah, negative 8 plus 6, negative 2. All right. And then what are we going to do to column 4? Uh, negative 3 root 1. Column 1. So hard to get to say that. Plus column 4 is the new column.
if it would ever write. There we go. All right. And what would that give us? Uh, negative eight. It's too big a number for me. Negative seven, not much better, a little. Say again. Zero. zero, yes, of course, that's why we did it. If I could get the zero to right, I would be a happy camper. And then it wrote over itself five times. Okay. And then the last. Negative 15. Negative 15. Who came up with this idea? Okay. Now, what's your next thing you're going to do? You're going to use that one to find your determinant, right? What's the sign of that position? Plus. Plus. So that's going to be a one again. I like that. I'm not even going to bother writing it down. So it's going to be, the determinant is going to be the determinant of the remaining 3 by 3, which is 2, 3, negative 1. No, 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 no. You let me get away with that? What were you doing? Falling down on the job here. You're supposed to keep me from making mistakes. Okay. Right. Three, negative one, negative, oh. Okay, I'm sorry. I planned to do this and then got so focused on my writing problems I didn't do it. Three, negative one, if the one would write, negative eight, three, Negative one. I'm getting down to a three by three. I'm going to go straight to doing it this way. No zeros in it, so let's just do it this way. What's the next one? Where'd you get the last negative one from? Uh, uh, CSM. Yeah. You see, I'm wiping out that column that row. I should have done that to begin with, but I was so fighting with my pen. Okay. Next. Six. Six. Four. Negative seven. Negative seven. Six, four. Six, four. You talk too fast. Oh, okay, never mind. Go ahead. Nine. Nine. Negative, ten. Negative two. Negative fifteen. Negative fifteen. Nine, negative six. Nine and negative two. All right. I'm ready to hit the diagonals. Oh, am I? That first one's a bear. You got a calculator handy? Uh, yeah. 12 times negative 15. Oh, let's do it easier than that. That's negative 60 times 3 is negative 180, right? I'll do it right. That's uh, negative 180. Okay. And then the next one, I think, is a plus 63. Is that right? Okay. The next one. Oh, let's do. It's going to be a plus, And it's going to be 12 times 8 is 96. Yeah. 96. Those are my down diagonals. I think I'll erase my construction lines here just because they tend to get a little in the way. Okay. I need all the help I can. This up diagonal is going to be what? It's going to be a plus, right? Plus and 288. 288? Okay, you're quick. I hope you got a calculator. If you're doing that in your head, you're embarrassing me. Okay, 
Which are you doing? Uh, ah, thank you so much. Okay. This is going to be a minus. And 6 times 7 is 42. Is that right? Okay. And the next one's going to be a minus as well. And that's going to be 90. Is that right? I think so. Okay. Now, hmm. Okay. I'm going to do these two together and make that a 6. Okay. Do anything to make it easier. I'll add these two together and make it a 108. And that's a plus. Okay. I hope I did that right. I'll do these two together and make that a 21. So that's a plus. Well, uh, I was heading that way too. 135 looks right. Oh my goodness! Except they got a negative. How in the world did we lose a sign? I do not know. They got a negative 135. We were so close, but no cigars. Um, it may be my first choice there of using the minus one. But I don't see how that could have done it to me. But anyway, we were close enough, just on, off by a minus sign. And, okay. If you want to go back and find where they made a mistake, that sounds like a good practice for the student, okay? All right. Uh, homework exercise, that finishes 3.2. Homework exercises here would be any of the odds 1 through 19, uh, from very small, simple ones to some pretty complex ones. Then either 20, and by the way, all these are at Calc Chat. Uh, 21 and 23, both at Calc Chat. Any of the odds 30, uh, 25 to 35, they're all at Calc Chat. There's a true false 37. Should be at Calc Chat. And there's either 39 or 41. Should be at Calc Chat. 43 is a proof. Shouldn't be too bad, but you can try it if you'd like. 45 looks like a pretty interesting one. You can try that if you'd like. There's a guided proof, 47, and that's it. And they should all be at Calc Chat. Now we're going to look in 3.3 .3 at properties of determinants. Seemed like we'd already been doing these, but let's see if we can derive some more. Okay. Uh, and what have we got? About five minutes? Yeah. Okay. Let me erase this and let's take a look at some. Here's a matrix A. One negative two two zero three two and one zero one. Here's matrix B. Two zero one zero negative one. Negative two, three negative, and a three one negative two. Okay. Now, it wants us to find the determinant of A. Now, with those two zeros in there, cofactor isn't going to be too bad. 
is it? Uh, we could either or one row reduction wouldn't be bad. Let's do minus row one plus row two. Or row three, sorry. That'll be the new row three. So it'll be one, negative two. Do you see anything easier? You might see something that would be easier. I don't know. That just popped off my head right there. I think that was going to be about as good as any. Again, look at the row or column with the most zeros. Either one of those would be good to work with. So I just chose, since I'm used to row reductions, do that. Leaving this one alone, 0, 3, 2. And what is the new row 3? New row 3. Are you still there? Huh? Zero. Um, negative no, two. Two. And a negative one. Negative one. Okay. Now I think I can do the determinant pretty easily. This is in a plus position, of course. One times minus three minus four is negative seven. This time I'm going to look before I go any further. That's right. All right, how are we doing on time? Two more minutes. Let's see if we can get B done. Okay. Almost the same situation. Um, I think the easiest thing to do would do a sounds bizarre but a row reduction here of row three plus row two is the new row two that will do us pretty well won't it okay to use this one in row three, in the middle of row three, to wipe out the negative one in the middle. So top row stays the same, two, zero, one. Yuck. Middle row now becomes row three plus row two, three, zero, negative four. That's a zero, negative four. And bottom row stays three, one, negative two. Now doing whatever you call that, cofactor or eliminate, whatever you call that. Using this position, what is the sign of that position? No, that's a minus. Plus, minus, plus, minus. That's a minus 1 times the determinant of what's left over. Wipe out this row in that column. You get a 2, 1, 3, negative 4. Okay. What does that give you? Negative 1 times... Minus 8, minus 4, uh, uh, minus 3, goodness gracious, minus 11. So this gives you 11. And that's what they got. Okay. Unfortunately, we've gone a minute over. So we will pick up next time. We've done A and B. We are going to do the product of A and B and then do the determinant of that product. So we got a little bit more to go. Not sure we did enough to uh, have any new exercises here, but we'll begin there. Now, you know the good news, bad news situation, don't you? The good news is next week is spring break week, but the bad news is we won't be meeting then. So I hope you can get over that. Uh, but I, 
I'll see you tomorrow. To, no, tomorrow's Friday. I'll see you this week. Okay. So have a safe and careful spring break week. Don't get around people. Stay away from people as much as possible. Are you working anywhere? Uh, no, I work to shut down. Oh, okay. Well, I know that's bad on the pocketbook, but it's probably good on the health. Uh, uh, where did you work, by the way? I worked at a warehouse for uh, out of outdoors. Oh, okay. I was going to say, if that was Amazon, I would think you'd be working even more, because they do have that warehouse somewhere in Bressmore, don't they? Uh, that I bet you they're going great guns there. Uh, but anyway, be safe. Uh, take advantage of being at home and stay. I know it could be boring, but find things to do, but don't get around people. It's just not worth it. And I think I may have mentioned to you, I'm doubting seriously that we come back before the end of the yeah. term. Uh, UAB. Yes. Right. And so is University of Alabama. So I don't see any way we're coming back in two weeks. Just no way whatsoever. So, um, and even if the college does, I believe the dean is going to say, tell me to stay home. Because this thing is not even near its peak yet. We're still climbing. And uh, we may be leveling off a little bit just because people are staying in like they're supposed to. But by and large, we're still, it's going to get worse before it gets better, I'm afraid. So be careful. All right, have a good break. And we'll see you actually a week from Monday. So that'll be the 30th, I believe it is, for Cal 3. Then I'll see you all next week. Okay. Take care. Stop the sharing. I thought I stopped the sharing. Okay. In the meeting.